Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be looking at is basically some things to avoid when you start modding and stuff like that. So we're going to be looking at the actual uh, M Creator's modification publishing guide guidelines as it's really a good example of things to avoid when you're first starting and it also helps you to kind of understand what not to basically post uh, solo on the website itself regarding mods. So that's a good starting point, but also take the other advice that I have and basically plan long term into your mods. And generally, if you do that, uh, your mods will be pretty much good to go for the for basically uh, publishing and stuff like that. But um, basically, Today we're just going to be looking at the guidelines and kind of figuring out, give you a rough idea of what to kind of avoid. So the in introduction, like you can read the entire page, but uh, generally what M Creator wants is quality and so does the people that actually use the mod. If people just quickly put something together, it's not going to uh, take off as quickly as if something has been done with uh, effort and um, quality uh, in mind. So for example, if you just look at these uh, examples on the left hand side, these are basically some examples that probably were used with um, other mods in the past, maybe, I don't know. But uh, these are generally have nothing to do with the mod itself. And then on the right, you can kind of see that they've uh, taken the effort and taken actual screenshots, did some artwork with the actual things. Some, some of them have mod titles. So those are all better icons for the actual uh, thumbnail for your mod um, where these ones on this side you know the textures are kind of cut over and it's only a couple items uh, there's recipes for this one which isn't really what you want to do uh, I mean a cheeseburger is completely left field it's not even what would probably be in the mod itself blurry textures not great and mod workspaces are definitely no-go um, but on the other side, you have the uh, custom logos, um, content showing showing your content and what's in your mod. Uh, you have the kind of like a texture uh, pattern thing to go with, like a theme. Uh, you have like terrain, landscape and stuff like that. So you can kind of have a title over that if you want. And, you know, just general um, screenshots for what your mod actually includes as well. So some of the undesirable mod types. Now this is where the most important part comes in when you're actually planning out a new mod. Uh, if you're planning out with something new, I always generally brainstorm some ideas of things that I want to do, what inspires me, and then I take it to the next level and I basically final process the further part of it and I basically go, okay, uh, say if I wanted to add something, new ores and stuff like that, I mean, I don't necessarily start with new ores, I always start with the mechanic parts of things, and then I work my way into creating resources for that um, particular mechanics that I need. So say, um, for example, if I were to make some type of machinery and I use iron for the initial recipe, then I can go back and maybe update it to aluminum or something like that and then integrate the ore later on to basically be used for crafting in that particular mod. Um, I don't just go ahead and uh, create an entire ore pack, but you can create ore packs and stuff like that. and include tools and weapons and stuff in your main mod that's not the problem it's just having the ores and the tools that have really no use other than having them in a specific mod now i'm sure if you were to add really good quality ones uh the moderators would probably would kind of probably allow it but if it was really high quality like really top of the line best quality if you're pixel artist kind of quality so that would be probably allowed uh, to an extent uh, as long as it's you know really good quality stuff um, for example a lot of the mods that are on that get actually blocked and stuff on M, M creators uh, 
website is actually really low quality tool packs and stuff like that. And they do actually say in here that, um, you know, you can do some of this stuff as long as it's uh, higher quality stuff. Um, I forget where I read that, but I was reading it over as I was um, just before I started and it said uh, that it's uh, mostly due to lower quality mods. So, uh, for example, ore packs, those are things that just add ores and gems, you know, basically any type of new resource. Uh, those are things you want to kind of stay away from. Uh, basic more commands and mods. So basic um, more in command. So this would be something like uh, more tools, more um, more resources, more paper, more things like that. So uh, commands and uh, so basically commands uh, if you're creating a command for something or a game rule or something like that then those would kind of be not really main content per se. It's more of a uh, secondary content if I put that in correct terms. So the main content would be the main focus of the mod where it could be like my automation mod where it would be like um, me creating the mechanics and then there's an actual purpose for the mod and then I could go ahead and get add game rules and commands and stuff later on to basically make things a little bit more easier for the mod itself. So again alone not great uh, for actually publishing most people are not going to use a mod that has very few features like that um, if there's a lot of quality content people are obviously going to use a lot more tool and armor packs pretty self-explanatory um, they're going to um, just add more ores most likely the ore packs and then they're uh, tools and stuff like that that still doesn't really have any major purpose other than that uh, than creating the weapons and tools. I'm sure if you went in a little bit further and created, uh, I don't know, some extra mechanics and stuff like that into there, I'm sure it could probably get away with it as long as the content was um, at a higher quality, you know, like you, you've taken your time with the textures, you've um, studied how to actually create your own textures or have had someone help you with the textures that is really good with uh, texturing and stuff. Uh, the more weapons mods, so these are basically just things that like range items to um, swords, uh, daggers, things like that. Um, basically no purpose other than having more weapons. Uh, it's not exactly what people want on the website itself and generally they don't get as many uh, actual downloads and stuff as well. All these things don't actually get as much downloads as if you were to go with something like my CCTV craft mod or uh, automations, my latest uh, work in progress mod. Uh, OP swords, so basically overpowered swords. So anything that is uh, very, um, well, overpowered. So basically in that context what overpowered means is uh, too high of stats and basically makes it uh, almost game breaking mechanics so if you were to create a sword that one hits kills the ender dragon that would be very overpowering and obviously that's not exactly what servers want for their mods, nor do a lot of people when they're actually gaming and stuff like that. Um, it's sometimes some people like it. Some people really want that kind of stuff, but the uh, audience for that kind of stuff is not um, very high when it comes down to having OP swords and OP tools or anything like that. So you want to kind of measure your... Um, basically measure the uh, how overpowered something is in your mod and kind of balance it out with uh, other tactics like you know making it more expensive for crafting or stuff like that so uh, there's done tons of different uh, methods that you can actually use to 
makes something not as overpowered and you can also change the mechanics in most things in M Crater now using procedures to basically um, lower the OP level of something. So in general, don't aim to make something OP, just um, if you, it does turn out to be something OP and you notice like there is a um, glitch or something like uh, exploit that could actually introduce something like uh, glitching in items or something like that, then you want to kind of make sure that it's a little bit more expensive to actually craft or obtain to basically get that item. Um, so the other one is hacks and cheats uh, mods. So anything that would basically um, give the player uh, an up advantage of basically um, cheating or getting items that would be unnecessarily hard to obtain. So very similar to the one above, but basically more specific to gameplay per se. So op swords is basically more like op tools and stuff like that. Um, this would be basically specific to creating things deliberately or hacks and cheeks are very more on making the game easier. Uh, generally don't go for that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just not really necessary for uh, most multiplayer or single player mods. Uh, it's uh, pretty low grade and easy to get your mod taken off the website. Uh, colored block types mods. So basically anything in addition without any ad additional functionality. So basically things like terracotta or um, other functions uh, would probably not be allowed on the website and probably are not great to actually create your own mod with. Uh, as a standalone mod. Now, if you were to add uh, more functionality, have a purpose for your mod, or include it into, um, say, something like your ore pack or something like that, you could, you know, make your ores diable and go the extra way, make sure that there's a different texture for each one of them. Then that would also kind of bundle it together, making it a little bit more excitable. And there's more, obviously, quality into the process of it doing it. Uh, but basically anything without functionality is generally not what people want and um, is a good thing to avoid when you're actually creating your first mod. All right, so here Brian, so anything that basically um, has no purpose other than uh, lore things in Minecraft. So, um, it could be basically Herobrine, it could be uh, other things, <laughs> I don't know how many other things there are, but uh, a lot of low quality mods actually try adding uh, Herobrine as some sort of um, advertisement campaign kind of thing to get people to download it. It generally doesn't turn out that well because a lot of people aren't that skilled in texturing when they first start modding their, making their mods and stuff like that. Uh, I will link to another page. We'll take that. I'll take a look at a page in just a second that will kind of help you learn the basics of actually texturing and stuff as it will be a pretty good step in learning. But uh, the last thing is basically testing mods. So only mods made for testing functionality of M Creator. So this is kind of um, more specific to the website. But uh, basically what this could do is um, basically just testing to see how to upload a mod or, you know, if uploading a tool pack or something like that would actually get taken down. So anything regarding that would actually be more focused on to the website and um, generally just leave your testing to yourself. Don't upload it ever to anywhere. It's not really needed for actual uploading. Um, only upload your mods, that's pretty clear, and aim for a theme or a um, actual purpose for it. Now, I'm just going to quickly go and take a look at some of the mods on the website itself, and hopefully I can kind of point out um, some of the things not to do. So let's go to the community. And I'll make sure to link that particular page in the description as well. 
All right, so I'm sure we can find a few of them that are low quality ones. Um, actually, all those are mod of the week, so we want to look in something like this. All right, so let's see. Let's uh, see if we can't find one of those really vibrant color ones that I normally find around. So, okay, for example, this one right here. Uh, we'll take a look at that one. Uh, the ores, it looks like an ore pack, so it should actually not be on this particular website to begin with. But uh, this is the ex ex excellent example of basically low quality texturing and stuff like that. You could basically um, still do this if it was higher quality, but definitely take your time with it. Avoid um, actually using the texture editor built into MCreator. I always suggest and recommend other third-party programs like uh, GIMP or uh, Paint.net if you have Windows because then you have more control over texturing and stuff. Uh, there's tons of other free programs out there that you can actually use to texture things and it just requires a little bit more um, learning of how to actually properly texture than so it doesn't kind of come out like this texture up here or that one. Um, you know you want to avoid flat textures again i'll show you kind of like some tips on that in the future so another one let's see if we can't find another one a lot of these actually have really good thumbnails so um oh those are the mod of the weeks so that's right uh let's see uh modeling that's modeling's a little bit different modeling is a little bit harder to do so i'm gonna try to avoid that i'm trying to find one that's um, very vibrant. It's, it's hard to see. I'll cut back in in just a second. All right, so I found a couple examples to basically show of vibrant mods. So this first one is the rainbow mod. Generally, you don't want to go with bright textures like this, uh, especially things like this. I'm surprised this mod actually hasn't been pulled down yet. Um, because it looks like it's just like a basic dimension mod that um, adds really uh, vibrant colors and stuff like that. Like under certain circumstances, I'm sure it would be possible, but the uh, emerald ore and stuff like that is probably not the great thing to add. The vibrant textures you want to kind of stay away from. You want to kind of have a kind of color palette that you work with and then you work with that. but definitely don't texture things like this because it um it really turns out really bad uh for uh your quality of the content and stuff another thing that you kind of want to avoid is very vibrant biomes and stuff like that like if you're going with a theme like something in the end then yeah sure go ahead with it but if it's in the overworld or something like that generally don't go for it the overworld has its own kind of uh theme to go with and the end has its own uh, if you create your own dimension, that's something completely different. Uh, another thing is the flat textures. You kind of want to avoid the flat textures. And um, the grass is probably the vanilla one, so that's no big issue. The other grass is like that. But the purple, you kind of want to have a variation in your um, your actual hue. Using hue offset will actually help with bring out a little bit more color and contrast. Now, who offset is basically just taking the original color that you start with and kind of use hue uh, to increase it by roughly around five, um, five points in paint.net or something like that. And then it kind of offsets the hue in one direction. Uh, there's a certain technique to go with that uh, when you're actually creating it. And that's where the next uh, website will actually help you with um, learning how to hue offset, do proper texturing, avoiding noise and stuff like that, but also not making flat textures like this. Um, overall, just kind of get a feel for the dimension that you're in. And then if you're working with a vanilla dimension, go with um, the vanilla biomes and stuff that they add. There's a very specific color palette when it comes down to what colors they do use for that particular thing. I mean, yeah, sure, they have mushroom biomes and stuff like that, but those are also really extra, extremely rare biomes to actually come across. You're not going to be coming across them every 
I don't know, 200 uh, blocks or something like that, or even a thousand blocks, you won't be coming across them. So, um, you know, just kind of have a feeling for what kind of biome, because people are generally not going to want something this vibrant in the overworld or something like that. Now, this could be a custom dimension too, but uh, I'm not, I didn't read the mod page. I'm just basically going on the actual thumbnail and screenshots that they have. So let's go and take a look at block bench. And actually that is um, where the next site is for their guide. So they have a really good guide on texturing. So we will quickly just go take a look at uh, their, I think it's their um, wiki that they have it. And then if you go under uh, custom themes, I think it's guides. So rendering Minecraft styling guide. Yeah, so here we go. So the Minecraft styling guide kind of shows you uh, not only the modeling, modeling aspect of things. So basically what to kind of go for compared to this but you can also get some texturing uh, tips as well. So a lot of that stuff up here is basically just modeling. And then if you kind of scroll down, they explain the um, hue offsetting and creating color palettes, uh, things to basically avoid like grainy textures. Um, basically this kind of texturing is not really good. This is more fits into Minecraft, obviously, having a very um, unique texturing and also not using large images is another big thing that a lot of people uh, tend to do is go outside of the vanilla realm of the 16 by 16 textures. Uh, generally want to be in that 16 by 16 texture limit and um, people can always make resource packs for your mods later on if they wish. But um, yeah, don't uh, go with larger textures. A lot of these things are pretty easy to actually figure out and uh, great guide, um, great for starters and beginners. So you can kind of read this over. There's a lot of information um, into this actual post here. So you guys can read this over. It covers modeling and actual um, texturing and stuff like that and it'll be a good place to start also do some google searches and see if you can't find anything on uh pixel art and uh basically going into the pixel art um designing textures and stuff through pixels and stuff but uh i'll make sure to leave this resource and the um community guidelines for m crater in the description so you guys can kind of read those over and get an idea of what to kind of avoid when you're creating your first mod. So hopefully you guys found today's video helpful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.